Prototyping is about building rough but playable versions of your game to test if your ideas actually work. You can think of this as sketching before painting. You want to know whether or not your composition works before you put a ton of investment in. When prototyping, you might be focused on gameplay such as movement or combat, or in the case of what we're going to learn today, the scene layout. In this lesson, we're going to use constructive solid geometry, also known as CSG nodes, to build a room. CSG nodes will let you create complex geometry directly in the engine. Let's get started. In the GitHub repository for this series, there is a prototyping section that has a starter project. You can download that project to follow along. And if you do, you're going to see a ground and a player that has the capability to move around the level. Now we're going to build up the environment around that player so that it's got walls and a door. And to do that, to start, we're going to go to environment, right click, and choose add child node. And under this, we'll go CSG, do a quick search. You can see many primitives that are listed here. We're going to go with box 3D since walls are, well, square like a box, and then hit create. Now, if I bring the camera around, you can grab this green arrow, which is the Y axis, and pull it up, move it around. It's not very precise, which I find is not great for prototyping. So instead, what you can do is use snapping, which aligns it to a defined increment. You can enable that one of two ways. The first is by holding the control button down while you grab and you can see it's it's jumping around pretty high i'll talk about how we can fix that in a moment but the other way if you don't want to hold the control button down is to come up over here and choose use snap now if you do have use snap on when you go to hold the control button down it'll inverse so the control button will then represent moving around without snapping i'm pre-programmed to just hold the control button down so i'm not going to enable this but it's there now to change the increment that the snapping is moving, you can come over to this transform and choose configure snap. And as I said, it defaults to one meter. I personally like about a quarter of a meter. I find that that's pretty good. So I'm gonna change that and hit okay. Now what we can do is set up the size of our box and that can be done over on the inspector by setting the X, Y, and Z values. So for our first wall, we're gonna go 10, 4.5, and 0.25 for the width. And then I'm holding control down. I'm gonna push this wall back till it's in line. And then I'm gonna rename this by double clicking in the hierarchy and putting wall. Now, I'm just gonna control D to duplicate, hold down control again, and then align this here and it actually looks like they're going through the floor a bit oh they're on the edge we can still grab both and then bring them up if we want just a little there we go we'll bring them in line okay so i'm going to pick wall two i'm going to duplicate bring that into the middle and then we're going to flip the wall so to do this we're going to go 0.25 on the X and then set 6.5 on the Z. And then I'm gonna push this back and bring it center. And then one more control D, grab this red arrow, which represents the X axis and line it up. Now we have a player, there we go, in the room. If we push play, and then move the player around. We're gonna see they go right through that wall, which obviously is not what you want to have happen when you have some walls. So the reason that this happens is because we did not enable collision detection. And that's an option within the inspector under the CSG shape 3D section. There's use collision. And all you have to do is turn that on and then that'll show two more areas, collision layer and collision mask. 
And we're going to dive a little more deeper into collisions in the next section. So for now, just leave these alone so that they're both set to one. Only one wall has that. So I'm going to select wall two through four and I'm going to turn that on. And then again, I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to come back over and push play. And now we hit the wall. Perfect. So another really useful property on a CSG node is the operations. And that again is located under the CSG shape 3D section within the inspector. There are three options that you can choose from. The first is union, which is how you add shapes together. The second is intersection, which keeps only the overlapping areas. And then the third is subtraction, which is how you can cut holes in another object. You can set these operations directly on the CSG node, which is what we're looking at right now, or you can use something called a CSG Combiner 3D. We'll talk about the CSG Combiner 3D in a moment. Let's just look at how we would cause two objects to perform an operation on the nodes directly. So I'm going to come back over to Wall, and I'm going to right click on that and go to Add Child Node. And then I'm going to pick another box. You can see this box starts right on the child. I'm going to pull it back a bit here. Now, this box, which actually we're going to name to be door, whoops, caps lock is on, door hole. Oh my goodness, hole. And then it change its operation to be subtraction. And you'll see it changed into a yellow box. Now this represents that it's going to subtract from something. Now, if we click off, the box is invisible. We don't really see any changes in our wall. But if we take this box and pull it in, now we can see that it's cut a hole, more like a window. And this is just how far that box is going through. So right now I have it sitting at about halfway through the wall. And if I hit, uh, escape to kind of click off of it, you can see there's a partial hole in it. So let's turn this into an actual door and we're going to set the shape or the, sorry, the size of the shape to three, 3.5 and then five for the Z, although actually, so we don't really need to do five, but we'll leave that at one. And then I'm going to pull that down and then push it through. And it should be pretty in line with the floor. It looks like that's perfect. And then now if we go into play mode, you can see that the player can go right through that hole and they still can't go through the wall. So if we try and run into the wall right next to it. So the collision detection is creating a proper setup within the wall to exclude any of that cutout behavior, which is perfect, it's what we want. So as I mentioned, there is one more way to perform operations to create different types of shapes for your prototyping level, and that is using the CSG combiner node. Now what this does is this groups multiple CH CSG shapes and then performs operations on them as a unit. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to combine all of this room together into, this actually represents a kitchen in um, the overall final project, Flyby Cafe. So I'm gonna select everything, right click, and then choose Reparent to New Node. And then CSG Combiner is right here. And I'll pick that. Now what's really interesting here is if I click on a regular CSG node, the box one, I'll see under CSG shape 3D, there is no collision option anymore. So if I come up to the combiner, that is where it moves to. There's a use collision option under the shape 3D. So we have to enable that and it'll go through and process it across the objects that have now been combined to enable collision just like we had before, but again, in a slightly more efficient way. Now you've seen how to use CSG nodes to block out a basic room. Remember, this isn't just about making something polished, it's about quickly testing ideas so you can see what works and what doesn't.
It's also important to note that CSG nodes have performance implications and they're not meant for production. So for your challenge, I'd like you to expand the scene. Add a second room and block out some furniture. Make a dining room with some tables and chairs. And don't worry about making it perfect, just focus on getting a feel for the layout and the flow. And then when you're done laying out your scene, walk the player around. Consider how easy is it to navigate. If you put interactable areas on the table or maybe the wall for the door, can they get to it easily? That's the kind of questions that prototyping helps you answer. In the next lesson, we're going to build on this and look at how the player can interact with objects in the environment. <laughs>